So Max uh, asked me to talk about an approach to AGI safety based on mathematical proof, which I think could benefit from mechanistic interpretability and uh, very exciting to see all the developments that uh, your uh, area is, is performing. So I thought I'd try and give a short 15 minute summary and uh, with some open questions and challenges and perhaps a, and a vision at the end sketching what society might look like uh, with uh, uh, safety based on, uh, on these ideas. Um, there's a lot of interest right now in safety because it appears that AGI and ASI are imminent. Uh, the prediction market Metaculus uh, kind of aggregates a bunch of people's opinions on something, and they currently believe that a kind of weak AGI, which is sort of an AGI which is like a can do anything a remote human worker can do, uh, is due in about 2026, and a stronger one based on robotics is due in 2031. And that once uh, AGI shows up, that artificial superintelligence, which is better than humans at pretty much everything, people are estimating six months to that. So we're talking very near term, probably next decade or so. And many people are worried about the consequences of this. There's a, a very nice little uh, documentary, The AI Dilemma, that the people who did the social uh, media dilemma or the social dilemma uh, put out. And in there, they, they reference a survey which says that half of AI researchers now believe there's a greater than 10% chance of human extinction due to uncontrolled AGI. So the fire is lit under us and uh, we really need to find good solutions to this. Uh, many people are working on alignment, which is great, trying to get, uh, you know, powerful AI systems to have values and goals which are aligned with human values. But in my opinion, these approaches, at least today's approaches, are a little bit too soft to really solve the problem. Here's an example of a paper just from a couple of weeks ago, uh, somebody talking about uh, alignment of large language models in which they conclude that any alignment process that attenuates undesired behavior but does not remove it altogether is not safe against adversarial prompting attacks. And this is just one of many, many examples showing that we don't just need probabilistic uh, guarantees that, oh yeah, these systems most of the time will do really well. We should really think of this in a security mindset and we really want adversarial guarantees. Any little unprobable situation of a sufficiently smart system will zoom right in on that and exploit it. So uh, I believe in addition, I think the alignment work is fantastic. We really need it. But we also need guardrails. We need hard guarantees and proofs that certain bad things won't happen. Um, so, for, so what bad things do we need to avoid? Well, you know, things which are potentially existential risks, like, you know, setting off nukes or releasing, you know, biohazards like small talk, uh, uh, smallpox. Uh, fortunately, some governments have recently, you know, said that, oh, yes, AI should not be able to independently launch nukes on their own. Whoa, great. But we need absolute uh, <laughs> technical guarantees of that. <laughs> and so how do we do that? That's the question I would like to consider. Uh, Luke uh, Moilhauser at uh, uh, Open Philanthropy uh, recently suggested some AI policy proposals, which I thought were interesting. The two that I think are especially relevant here uh, are up at the top here that uh, there should be monitoring and the possibility of remote shutdown for cutting edge AI chips, maybe like an NVIDIA H100 kind of thing, and large compute clusters uh, and training runs of large AIs should also be mon externally monitorable and uh, uh, allow rapid shutdown. And so the question is, okay, let's say we get into a regime where, you know, we treat this uh, as uh, Connor was saying, kind of as a military or a, you know, a biohazard uh, project and it needs to have uh, very powerful controls. Well, who exactly should flip the switch to turn off an AGI should some uh, suspicious looking circumstances arise? Uh, you know, many people say, oh, we need humans in the loop. And so really it should be a human there, you know, watching the switch and flipping it. Well, the problem with humans is that humans are corruptible and particular AGIs can manipulate humans and they may not fully understand the criteria. Humans are slow. We're operating on human time scale. Humans is probably not the right thing for you know, provable guarantees of safety. So then you think, well, our most powerful systems will be AGIs. We should have the AG another AGI, you know, watching and, and turn it off. Well, but then how do we uh, you know, trust that AGI? How do we get a sense of trust that this is going to behave the right way? We actually want something much simpler than an AGI. Um, in the blockchain world, crypto cryptocurrencies, there's a notion of smart contracts, which are basically little programs that are guaranteed, uh, so, you know, under the cryptographic assumptions of the blockchain, to execute as 
they're written and you know there's basically nothing you can do sh short of destroying the whole you know blockchain uh, to if you know if they won't work so this is great this is much more like what we want to manage these uh, you know very power potentially very powerful systems but we need con we need guarantees that these smart contracts are doing what we want them to do and in fact in the <clears throat> blockchain world in ethereum there have been many many millions of dollars lost due to little flaws in the logic of a smart contract and somebody didn't think of a certain case and some you know uh, an attacker exploits those vulnerabilities so i think what we really need is something you might call formal contracts which are smart contracts little programs that are guaranteed to run the way they say but with proofs that those um, little little programs obey the kind of constitutional rule, uh, rules that we want that uh, that guarantee safety and so how do we do that what's the technology for that well i think humanity's most powerful safety technology is mathematical proof and mathematical proof has been something humanity has been working on for at least 2000 years you know back in 350 bc we had aristotle and euclid sort of getting the first little snippets of that in the 1600s we had mathematicians sort of busily formalizing everything uh, in the 1800s we had what's modern logic started emerging from uh, people like boole and cantor and frege in the early 20th century we had set theory arising and type theory and computation theory they all kind of came in a big flurry uh, in the late uh, 20th century, you know, physics kind of uh, got a standard model, which, uh, you know, is believed to cover basically all, uh, you know, uh, phenomena on Earth. And we now have formal models for all of mathematics, for physics, computer science, engineering, economics. And the power of this whole line of human thought is that mathematical proof provides absolute guarantees within a formal model. And so can we leverage that to control these very powerful systems that are emerging? And so uh, when computers started you know, coming out, uh, people immediately tried to use them to do theorem proving. Uh, in the 1956, we had the first propositional theorem provers. In the 70s, we had the first first order theorem provers. Around 2000, uh, people discovered really powerful algorithms for solving NP-complete problems, the satisfiability problem, which is basically solving propositional circuits, uh, you know, uh, Boolean circuits. And there have been all these competitions every year since then, and they're, you know, up to, they can solve many problems with millions of variables, very powerful work. But it, that's not really powerful enough to capture the whole semantics of the world. And uh, so the the uh, set theory, type theory, category theory, all those kinds of formal models, uh, a bunch of proof assistants emerged around 2000. HOL, uh, Mizar, Metamath, Koch, Lean, Isabel are probably the most popular ones. And uh, those, they didn't have the power to automatically prove the theorems, but they had tools to help mathematicians prove theorems. And each of those groups has been building up the corpus of mathematics. And uh, in 2020, deep learning sort of got to the place where it's really, you know, taking off. And so neural theorem provers have started showing up and uh, are actually being be becoming quite powerful. Uh, just as an example, just to give you the flavor of these systems, uh, Metamath is an open source project. It was developed by one guy and a whole bunch of people sort of contributed to it. It's now, it's based on the, the simplest uh, Zermelo Frankel the set theory foundations. Uh, which is what you know traditional mathematics is based on and is believed sufficient for encoding everything that is sort of you know not too way far out there. Uh, they've got about 38,000 proven theorems on their website and uh, very fast and simple uh, proof checkers. They've got a 300 line Python program that a human can read through that program, really understand it, be absolutely convinced that this program does exactly what it says it does, and it can really rapidly prove, all, you know, check all the theorems. So as a che theorem checker, it's very good. Um, they've covered pretty much an undergraduate level of mathematics, which is sufficient for encoding pretty much all of computer science, engineering, physics, and so on. And um, the formal statement of something which can be checkable by a system like this is typically a little larger than an informal thing you might find in a textbook. And there's something called the De Bruyne factor, which is, you know, how much bigger is a formal statement? It seems to be about a factor of four. So it's not really bad at all. Oh, and here are the here are the axioms of propositional calculus, of predicate calculus, and of set theory. And these are the foundation for everything on one slide. So it's a... a, 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 a Humanity has found surprisingly simple, universal, formal system for representing all uh, relevant knowledge. The work on transformers for theorem proving and auto formalization is, 
you know, you'd really like to take existing math textbooks uh, written in English and have uh, a language model convert that into a formal system. And they're actually getting very good at it. Uh, Christian Zagetti at uh, Google, who's one of the you know forces behind that, has, is willing to take bets that uh, these auto formalization systems will be better than human mathematicians by 2029. Um, in 2020, OpenAI released uh, GPTF, F for formal, and uh, they proved a bunch of metamath theorems quite well. In 2022, Meta uh, has a group in France that did what they call the hypertree. Uh, oh, five minutes. Okay. Hypertree uh, proof search. It's sort of an alpha zero style um, transformer system, and it can prove 82% of uh, metamath theorems. So they're getting very close to being able to do the kind of simple theorems there. Um, for mechanistic interpretability, there are two things. One, if we could really prove exactly what uh, a large language model does, that would be great. What we really want is to prove what it won't do. We need absolute 100% guarantee that this large language model will not produce a certain bad thing. That I think the current methods won't really do. There are a bunch of techniques, abstract interpretation, interval methods, Taylor series bounds that people are exploring that allow you to take complex uh, circuit, uh, complex neural nets and uh, begin to bound what the possible behaviors that they can produce are, and then combine that with uh, what's going on with the mechanistic interpretability work, I think it's potentially very powerful. Also, it's very interesting to take an existing uninterpretable uh, network and use it to generate a formal model, which is provable in, you know, like a grammar or a you know, regular expression or something like that. So how do we use this for safety? So here are a few insights that sort of give rise to the thought that perhaps mathematical proof can serve as a basis for safety. First, as I, as I mentioned, proof checkers can be tiny, fast, and absolutely reliable. Small, interpretable, proven systems can control powerful AIs. Think of like a very rigid police officer who does exactly what he's told. He could still control Einstein uh, in some sense. Uh, simple zermelo frankel set theory or type theory can encode all real world systems. Things like undecidability, like the halting problem don't really matter. We don't care about proving any system what its properties are. We're designing these systems and we're only gonna use systems that we can constrain by proof. Uh, the formal ontology that we use to describe the system is critical, and uh, the way to think of it, I think, is as layered abstractions, sort of like the OSI layers in network theory, uh, and the bottom layer is physics, and the upper layers are the kind of programming and that kind of thing that we think about. We can incorporate black boxes, like powerful, you know, large language model AGIs, by forcing them to generate proofs of whatever actions they want to take, um, or forcing them to generate uh, much smaller interpretable formal systems so that, you know, maybe you train something on big complicated data set, the whole internet, but you never use that directly to do anything dangerous. You force it to generate something for which you have and to generate the proofs of uh, adherence to, to contracts. Um, and so we never let AGIs or humans actually act directly on dangerous systems. We always have some intermediary that is provable and testable that uh, guarantees that it obeys whatever contracts we have governing that. Uh, we use AGIs to generate white box systems, provably obeying social contracts, and society is guardrailed by a network of these proven contracts. So what are some of the challenges in actually bringing that about? Uh, first of all, I mentioned the abstract levels have to be implemented at lower, more physical levels, like an abstract processor, clean, nice uh, abstraction, but the physical hardware it's on may have flaws, like typical process, typical memory now is subject to row hammer. If you access the, the memory in the wrong way, you can get it to flip bits. Well, the system, you know, we need to have proofs of all of that. That's a huge challenge. We need formal models of all the existing systems. Auto formalization can help there. Instead, in addition to just formalizing mathematics, we can also give it, you know, programming language manuals and hardware manuals and so on and formalize all of that. So I think that's a sort of a whole direction that uh, we need to go in. Um, we need to design these formal guardrails. Uh, you know, up at the top, it might be something like zero probability of human extinction due to these AGIs, and then all the refinements of, of that beneath it. This is very similar to the, the task of uh, getting full alignment, um, but I think it's much simpler uh, because it's much cruder. Um, Critical hardware has to have provable provenance to avoid hardware trojans. Uh, we need to use unbreakable cryptography. We need to do sensing in the right way. So there's a number of challenges there, but they all seem at least theoretically possible. And where do we, where do we end up if we build a society like that? 
uh, the vision I have, a kind of a, a sketch here, is that every human would have a personal AI, which provably represents their interests. We have provably secure sensing, which detects all risky acts and yet does not leak any private information that does not involve a risky act. We have semantic voting, which provably aggregates every individual's needs at the societal level. We have a formal constitution, which provably governs all contracts. All contracts are formal, automatically and efficiently negotiated and enforced. And we have precise guardrails that guarantee safety with full freedom, subject to the guarantee of safety. And this leads, hopefully, to a human flourishing in an AGI world of abundance. That's it. <laughs>